Hi everyone, welcome to the Capital Mind YouTube channel. Today with us, we have Nit Chatriya, a research analyst at Capital Mind Research. We're going to be talking about a recent article published by Nihit, speaking about whether small caps are overvalued. So Nihit, uh, the small cap index, the BSE small cap index, has risen from about 36,500 to over 55,000 in a one-year basis. Yes. This represents a rise about, of about 52% year on year. So do you think this is sustainable going forward? So 52% rise in one year. And if you ask me if it is sustainable, so I think about 10-year time frame. So if... If you think about it, if something grows by 50% every year and if you extend it to up to 10 years, then rupee 1 invested over 10 years would convert to 60 rupees approximately. Now let me ask this back to you. Do you think such a rise is sustainable? The answer is very, very unlikely. And that's what my answer would, would also be. It would really depend on how the market goes, how the valuations are, how the earnings catches up. And yet, I don't think a 50% rise every year is sustainable. Okay. So, uh, I was going through your post and one of the interesting points that you mentioned is that there's been a sort of disconnect, and this is maybe even true historically, between EPS growth and the PE ratio multiples. Right. Uh, so, what is your analysis on that? Why is there this uh, sort of uh, right. gap? So in the post, we have pin, we'll pin the link in the description of this uh, video. So in the post, we have put on a graph where we are showing long-term trends of PE ratio of small cap index and the earnings growth of small cap index. And there we see that both these things don't go hand in hand, which means that when earnings are increasing at that moment, you don't see PE ratios also increasing. The key reason for is for this is that markets are forward-looking. So if I find a stock or if I find an index where I think that there's going to be phenomenal growth in the next five years, I'm going to give that stock a very high multiple right now in anticipation that the growth will follow. So I'll buy, a, buy the stock at very high prices and I'll say let it grow by 30%, 40% every year for the next five years. Now it's the job of the company to grow the earnings by 40% every year, which may happen, which may not happen. But at this moment, I have already given it a high P and I'm waiting for the growth to follow. So that's why you see that P multiples go very high, even though there is no growth right now. But when time uh, goes on, both these things converge. And we saw this uh, recently as well. As of July 11th, we were seeing that the one year earning growth in small cap index was minus 3%. Whereas P multiple growth was something more than 80%. And now just in, in uh, one and a half months time, we are seeing that both of these things have converged and the P multiple growth over the one year is 33%, whereas earnings growth is now 15%. So this phenomena keeps happening in the market. So as, as investors, you have to be conscious in what phase of uh, market you are and whether these both things are converging or diverging. And that will help you get an indication of how you can expect the index to behave. Got it, got it. So, uh, Nihit, I mean, this seems like a tricky place to invest, right? I mean, small caps are historically more volatile. So, uh, how should a retail investor uh, go about uh, investing in small caps? Should they be picking stocks themselves? Should they just buy the index? Or perhaps should they go to an actively managed fund? Right. So, the concept of picking stocks generally is the same. It does, it does not vary if you're picking a small cap or a mint cap or a large cap. Whatever investing style you follow, you can apply to all, all companies. But peculiarly for small caps, because we are talking about companies that are smaller in size, uh, we, have, uh, we, we should do better hygiene checks. So for example, if you're looking at a universe of small cap stocks, you should remove all the junk stocks. Uh, because these companies are small, they have uh, lower reporting standards. They also do not have a lot of resources to do proper reporting. Uh, corporate governance, we have observed, is not up to the mark as it is in larger companies. So if you remove all these uh, red flag companies, then you're left with a very hygiene-checked universe in the small cap uh, index. Out of, in the, out of these uh, filtered out stocks, if you apply your concepts of investing, uh, then you can pick better stocks. Now, why this is important, especially for small cap stocks, is because uh, for large cap stocks, you can probably invest in an index and you will do just fine. And that is the, also in large caps, you see a lot of active large cap funds hugging the index because those are big companies, those are uh, companies with better corporate governance and everything, so they do okay. Uh, but in small caps, in the index, there are so many junk companies, illiquid companies, that they bring down the overall returns of the index. So at that point, uh, an active fund in, in small caps makes a lot more sense. and Or if you're picking your own stocks, then probably having a very good hygiene check filters uh, gives you an edge. Got it. 
So in your article, you uh, briefly mention uh, a concept called inversion. Right. So could you explain it uh, in the context of uh, this? So uh, not just the concept, the whole article is uh, is uh, written in a way that we are trying to challenge all the uh, data that is uh, being uh, reflected in the index. So the rapid rise of index is again, we invert that concept, as you said, you know, whether if 52% growth is sustainable. So I inverted that uh, and asked you back whether you think something can grow from 1 to 60 in the next 10 years. And that is very highly unlikely. Similarly, we talked about valuations. So right now you see stocks having P multiple of 60, 80, 100, 125, 200 even, uh, while the index has an average P, uh, P multiple of 30. So there we are talking that uh, suppose right now you buy a stock which is brilliant in one of the hot sectors and that stock has a PE of 100. Now if you buy that stock today and if you hold it for 10 years and the multiple of that stock over 10 years comes to 30 which is the average. So for that stock to give you a 15% CAGR return, the earnings of that stock has to grow by 30% every year. And if you invert it, if you buy a stock which is 30 P right now and for that stock to give you a 15% return over the next 10 years, the earnings have to grow only by 15%, which is half of the earlier example. Now you'll think that 30% earnings increase, 15% earning increase does not look like a big thing. So uh, an exercise for you, uh, go to screener.com, apply a filter and find out how many companies in the past 10 years with a market cap of more than say 3000 crores. We are removing the small, very small illiquid companies. So go to screener, find out companies, market cap more than 3000 crores. How many have, of them have increased their earnings by more than 30% over last 10 years? You'll only find a handful of names. And then find out companies which have grown earnings more than 15% over the last 10 years. And you'll find a lot more names. And that really tells you that your valuation wise, you're far better off picking companies which are not as highly valued as other companies and which do not have the pressure of growing their earnings by as high as 30% every year for the next 10 years. So this is how in the post you'll find few more examples as well where we have practiced the concept of inversion and we have flipped the assumptions on their head and uh, tried to avoid doing stupidity and try to avoid making mistakes uh, while picking stocks. So Charlie Munger, uh, uh, the, the late Charlie Munger is, is the is the a person from which I had learned about inversion and I found it to be a very powerful concept and uh, that is something that uh, uh, we have applied in the post as well. Got it, got it. So, Nahit, one last question, right? I mean, so as as we said, I mean, small caps have uh, outperformed large caps and the rest of the market by uh, a significant percent over a long period of time. So, uh, moving forward and if I have as a retail investor a long-term horizon of say 10 years, should I just allocate all of my money to small caps? I mean, would that be a good way to generate market beating returns? It sounds very seductive that, you know, uh, it, these are small companies, they'll grow fast and the small cap index has done really great. So people would think, I'm anyway investing for more than 10 years, let me just put all my money in small cap stocks. Uh, this is a flawed way to think about it. And uh, my one word answer is that boring word called asset allocation or diversification. Now, Talking about asset allocation or diversification is as boring as that cabin crew talking about flight safety instructions before you take that flight. You're not interested in what they are saying. But you do realize that when you're in trouble in a flight, you you sure uh, hope that you would have listened to those instructions and now are able to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. This is just like that. Uh, you don't think about diversification in good times when markets are booming. But when you see volatility in the market, when your portfolio is down 30%, 40%, 50%, at that point of time, you think that I should not have put all my money into a volatile in, uh, index. Uh, and small cap index is volatile. Uh, if you go to the post, we have put in data where uh, at times it has taken as high as eight or nine years for the small cap index to come out of a drawdown. I'll again invert the argument and ask you, do you have the capacity to hold on to an investment which is underwater, which is not even uh, recovered to your original cost for nine years. And uh, by my little experience in the markets, I could tell you that very rarely somebody has the capacity to hold on to an investment. Because mind that if you don't hold that investment for those drawdown periods, you're not going to get the bull run of the last six years. 
so my short and sweet answer is that always diversify always think about uh, the volatility of your investments always think about how you are going to behave when this thing uh, goes through a very deep drawdown and uh, once you have answered these honestly uh, you'll be able to figure out that uh, probably the right way is to do diversify and not put all your eggs in one basket so sure. to say sure so thanks nehit and that's it from our side uh, so uh, if you're not subscribed to the youtube channel please and you like our content please give us a subscribe uh, and uh, do like uh, our content and comment if you have any suggestions for our youtube channel thank you thank you